Francisco in 1934 had a general strike. This was post um, Great Depression, right? The, the the markets crashed and everything. Um, and workers, I mean, they had lost everything. Workers had lost everything at that point. They'd lost their jobs. Uh, if not, they were forced to work in like terrible work conditions. You know, they were they were forced to work in awful, awful work conditions for for little or no pay, um, just to have a job, right? Just to be like, we have a job, um, just for 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 that notion. Um, so today, every day uh, down in the shipyards, this this started in the shipyards. Um, workers would uh, line up at the docks and hope that they would get hired for the day. And um, they, in order to do that, in order to consistently have work, they would have to bribe the foreman or they would have to suck up to this, this guy and in, in hopes that th this person would hire them for more than just one day, right? That was kind of the hope, to be like, oh, maybe I'll have like a permanent job um, instead of just being this sort of like, I have a job for today, but who the fuck knows what's going to happen tomorrow. Um, so everything for this starts the prior year in, in 1933, um, Matson navigation refused to recognize, uh, the international longshoremen association. Uh, basically these guys were saying that you need to hire workers and you need to treat them better. And Matson navigation was like, you're not a, you're not the boss of me. Uh, is sort of how they they reacted, like like children, uh, and they were just like talk to the hand because the face don't want to hear it no more. Uh, and it, the International Longshoremen Association was like, hey, I don't, man, I'm just trying to talk about how to treat these workers properly. Um, and then uh, and then Matt's and Navigation took their pants off and mooned them, and they were like, I guess we're gonna have to go on strike because these people are just showing their butts to us, and that's. Uh, that's not what we want. This is so aggravating, right? So basically what this did is it showed like what they were standing up for in 1933 was the importance of unionization, what the unions were actually trying to do and why the unions are actually important. Um, so uh, they fought back. They made a national presence. And in 19, 1933, the National Industrialization Recovery Act uh, was passed in cooperation with the unions. And at this point, too, the American Federation of Labor um, was working with the ILA, the International Longshoremen Association. Um, and these strikes kind of got bigger because um, FDR was on vacation and, like, didn't know what to do. Right. So these strikes just started growing. So eventually this thing escalated. Um, more and more people were going on strikes because the unions weren't being treated fairly. They weren't being um, recognized to be serious. The workers were being treated terribly or they were just being put out of work they you know and they were going on these crazy work conditions being worked to the bone so in july um there there people started striking and uh and there was a a, a violent revolt uh where a bunch of strikers uh this was, thing, this was called bloody thursday uh, a bunch of strikers uh were attacked by the police um they killed two people they injured 70, and they and and the reason why the injury lum numbers went up, and I mean it's a miracle that m m no more than two people died. Um, it's still unfortunate, but like no more than two people died is like a huge thing. Uh, <laughs> they had clubs, tear gas, guns with live ammo, and riot guns. Uh, they call and then the and then after this happened. Um, the National Guard was called with tanks and machine guns and snipers, and the death of these two people just brought more solidarity to the strikers themselves. Uh, so then there was a funeral march. Um, and the funeral march was, was in protest of the fact that the United States brought in the National Guard, brought in the police specifically to kill workers, to attack its own citizens because their citizens were asking to be treated better. So they, they had a funeral march, um, standing in solidarity with the strikers and the desecration um, upon f about firing on workers. Um, so once again, it's 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 that same response that you, that we saw in the nineteen nineteen Winnipeg um, uh, general strike, which which was 
uh, oh, you're, you want, you, you want to see how badly we can actually treat you? Oh, you, oh, you want to see how bad we get? Oh, I'll show you bad. Oh, I'll show you bad. Like, that's the same, and then they, you know, killed two people, injured 70 people. Um, so, July 16th, 1934, there was a call for a general strike. Uh, and here's the thing with the, the San Francisco general strike of 1934 is that this strike did not end. Um, you know, the, the, the Seattle strike ended because in six days because of, uh, morale, they saw their leaders get arrested. They didn't know what to do about it. Um, so they were, they, they, they were like, okay, I guess, okay, let's, let's just go back to, to work. Uh, fine. You know, whatever. Uh, they tried to do that in Winnipeg, and Winnipeg decided to march. Um, and then, you know, eventually there was violence, uh, and they pulled out. They were like, no more violence. We don't want to see any more people die. We're, we're, we're done. Um, this thing started with violence. This thing started with, with um, uh, you know, uh, a desecration of morale. They killed workers, they tried the violence, they tried the morale decrease, and then the general strike happened, right? And, and they didn't stop until, until they were ready to meet their demands, right? They were just like, you can keep demoralizing us and you can keep trying to kill us, but we're not going to stop asking for decency and respect, for, for being compensated fairly. We're not going to stop asking for equality, right? And that's, and that's what happened. And there was all these McCarthyist lies, um... Uh, that 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 were being uh, ran around by, you know, um, by uh, the 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 newspapers. Like, and and here's the thing: San Francisco. Like, look, they they called out the troops. Troops called out here. One killed, twenty four shot. Widespread rioting is how they reported it. Widespread rioting. They don't they don't talk about the fact that the troops shot on these protesters first, right? So so the 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 narrative and. Um, the way that they, that these stories are always spun is that oh they're rioting these are rioters they're not strikers they're just rioting animals they're just out there to destroy capitalism with with their with with their caring and their compassion for their fellow man how dare they how fucking dare they right so finally um, they tried to they tried to do this for fifteen days and. Eventually, you know, the, the, the strikes weren't letting up. Uh, and on July 30th, 1934, the ILA and the AFL uh, ended the strike after they got collective bargaining rights. Um, so they got collective bargaining and they were like, OK, we are going to uh, we're going to pull back on this general strike. And for the entire month of, you know, for, for, for those 15 days, I mean, it really inconvenienced San Francisco citizens. Of course it did. You know, these longshoremen were not going get to get anything off of these ships. Trade and commerce was basically stopped. None of the grocery stores were getting restocked. None of the, you know, goods and services were being delivered to people. Um, and, and, you know, all these things always end up in community efforts. Like when people really need the help, like if people were like, shit, we need, we got to distribute some bread to people. We got to distribute milk to people. That's what happened in 1919. That's when all, that's when the army was brought in, uh, into play in 1919 is, is when these community programs started developing whenever they were like, no, we can take care of each other. Like we can work together to take care of you. We don't need these assholes to dictate how we should take care of each other. We can just do that on our own, right? Um, and really, it, what it did was, it it showed it showed the powers that be that that we dictate the economy, that we're the ones by striking have stopped the the, the flow of commerce. We control that that pipeline of, of of the economy, right? Not the government. This this thing that we're in now. Uh, if we fast forward from 1934 to today, this thing that we're now the the the, the quarantining and and the economic stimulus, the economic stimulus to people really just bailing out banks and Wall Street, that is being controlled by the government. That that economic flow is being controlled by 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 striking. You take that control away from the government, and you and you show them that no, we have been in control of this economy the whole time, and you've been lying to us about it. So. Really, in 1934, when this general strike happened, who was the one that really got scared? 
rich people. <laughs> I feel like I feel like some of you guys might have known that that's the answer that was coming. The rich San Franciscans, they were the ones that were really nervous about this, right? They were the ones that kind of, um, they, they convinced themselves, they convinced themselves with absolutely no proof that this was the communist revolution. Why? Because they would not be rich anymore. That's the real fear in all of this, is that if employees are treated properly, if they seize the means of their own production, if everybody gets an equal chunk of the pie, if, if we all realize that, you know, in order to make society work, everybody has their own purpose. Everybody has a, a distinct um, drive and a distinct thing that they can do that they're good at. Well, why do we need hierarchy then? Well, we need hierarchy to determine who is richer than the other person, right? That a, that a manager is more important then you know the line worker and 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 the manager is not as important as the CEO or the CFO or anything. And it's like everybody kind of contributes to the we're all piece we're all pieces to the bigger puzzle you know we are all pieces of the gestalt and and this really shows us that yeah not we're the, the this this notion of hierarchy is is uh is bullshit so finally in 1934 um you see a general strike work you, you see a general strike get what it needs to get. You know, what did they achieve? They got union recognition. They got a 12% wage increase, equal share of the work, paid sick and injury leave, um, and no more bribing of the bosses. They put the Wagner Act, which protects workers and unions. Um, so this was a big deal. This was a big deal that happened. And this was, the, this was a win. This was the first general strike, which, you know, in the course of the, the, the um, early 1900s, this, this is like the third one that's happened, and, and that, that, that third one yielded a victory um, that, you know, protected unions, protected workers, and all that. That's a huge win. It kind of shifted the course of the conversation. It shifted, like, how workers were really being treated, how we should be treating workers, you know, that, that if you get sick, if you get injured, it's not the worker's fault. It's just sort of the course of the way that life works, and they should not be penalized for it. It changed the dynamics in the co the conversation, and that and that did happen, uh, you know, n not just through unions but also through worker solidarity. Um, that's and that's really what these these strikes are about. So we saw this one example work. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, please give it a like and a subscribe and a share. Share it out with your friends, your enemies, whoever you think would enjoy content like this. I'm going to be putting out videos like this every single day. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel uh, and make sure you hit that bell so you get all the alerts from all the videos that I put out there. Uh, and, uh, and if you, if you have the means to, uh, please consider making a, a donation. I know we are all in tough times, but if you, if you can, uh, you can become a sustaining member or make a one-time donation at ramennoodlescomedy.com slash donate. You can check out various different ways of becoming a sustaining member or just make a one-time donation. Uh, while you're on my website, you can also check out all of my past comedy albums, which are available on all of your favorite streaming and um, downloading websites, if that's, that's, if that's a way that you can you say that. Uh, <laughs> but they're also available on Bandcamp, which uh, right now is giving the most back to artists. Uh, but also on my Bandcamp, they are all available for a pay what you want. If you would like to enjoy some live stand-up comedy albums from me and you don't have the means, if you're in tough times, that's totally fine. You can download it for free. Go ahead and get it for free and enjoy it. Uh, or if you do and if you want somebody else to enjoy it, you can get it to them as a gift. Uh, that's also a, a recommended thing. Uh, but most importantly, thank you guys for tuning into this video. Um, thank you guys for, for all the people that have already donated, that have already become patrons. I really appreciate it. You guys are amazing. And uh, until the next video, we'll see you on the road. Thank you, guys.